Praxis Prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and today we're talking about the Day 5 episode of Praxis Prepper Alien Invasion. We're going to talk about some of the discussion points and topics in the episode, and at the very end I'm going to show you a sneak peek of what's happening next week on the show, so make sure you stick around for that. But before any of that, if you haven't seen the Day 5 episode, there's a link up above, you can click on it and find out what we're talking about before we talk about it. Wait a moment. Okay, and we're back. Before we talk about the discussion points, though, there's a few people that I wanted to thank. If you're not familiar, the only reason I can do this Alien Invasion series is from the generous support of people just like yourself who have gone to Patreon and for as little as a dollar a month are keeping the series going. Just last week, we finally hit the goal of being able to guarantee one new episode per month, you know, as long as funding levels stay where they are. I think that's tremendous. I never knew that we were necessarily going to get there. Um, I'm psyched that we have. The next goal I think would be really nice to hit would be to be able to do two episodes per month because a month between episodes is kind of a long time to wait. I, my, I think the ideal rate would be the first and third Friday of each month would be Alien Invasion and then the other episodes will be kind of regular Praxis episodes. I think that'd be ideal. We'll see if we can get there. If you like the, the, if you like the sound of that, if you like the idea of not waiting a month between episodes, Head over to Patreon, jump on board, and again, for as little as a dollar a month, you can help support the series, keep it going, and help, help us get to that level of being able to do two episodes a month. For January, we are going to stay, uh, stay at that level, two episodes in January. We've got today's episode, uh, and the third Friday in January, we're going to have an episode. But then once we hit February, we'll just be at whatever level um, you know, funding is... Uh, is uh, supporting at that moment. So I wanted to thank a few people who have just jumped on the last week, and the people are uh, Mark Bro or Brew, B-R-E-A-U. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, Roger Burnham, Joe Smith, Robert Green, and General South. Thank you all so much for your support. Again, this would not be happening without you. So many people thank me personally for doing this series, and yes, I play a role in it. I create the episodes and everything, but I am not the only person that deserves thanks. Those five people I mentioned and so many others who have contributed in the past are the ones that are partnered with me to help make this, uh, this series. And if you're going to thank one of us, thank all of us, because we're all do really doing it together. So enough about that. Yes, pa Patreon supporting it, blah, 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 blah. Let's talk about the real episode. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're talking about wild edibles today. Oh, and I, I've got to mention, shots were fired. Shit's finally happening. I'm sorry. Some people have talked about my language. Stuff's, stuff's happening on the episode. So things things it's about to, okay I, I i like the word I, I use the word shit a lot i'm sorry shit's about to start get, getting real dude so you know next couple of weeks gonna be very exciting i think anyway yeah so shots were fired but we're really talking about wild edibles and uh you know what that means to people for their survival plans now i think when people think about prepping and food the first thing i think about is buckets of beans and rice and oats and grains and stuff like that in their basement. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big part of it. I do that kind of thing. People also think about gardening and that's a big part of, uh, you know, my skill set that I'm working on all the time. Uh, but gathering free, grown on their own wild edibles, I think is a really important third element to that uh, for reasons that I'll explain. Uh, first off, uh, it's better than gardening because you don't have to work at it at all. <laughs> it just happens on its own. The only part of it that you have to participate in is the walking over and picking it up and eating it part, which is kind of the best part of the whole process. Uh, so it's got that all over gardening because gardening takes a lot of effort and there are pests that you have to chase away and everything. Uh, but if it's just growing wild on the ground, you don't have to worry about it. You just have to walk out and you have to pick it up if you are able to identify it. Um, it's also a really good partner for all that stuff I mentioned, like the beans and the rice and other grains and things of that nature that you're stacking down in your basement because those are a lot of, a lot of calorie rich foods, but they aren't necessarily super nutritious foods. So having all those wild greens that you can add to your diet while you're eating the rices and the beans and everything is going to keep your body healthy because it's not, it's, the only game isn't just to get enough calories. You also want to keep, you know, your nutrition. Uh, continuing and everything. So it's really critical for that reason as well. Are wild edibles anything that you've even thought about? Here is a book right here. This is really one of my, it's kind of my favorite book on wild edibles. I have, I have a few that I really, really like, and I hate to not mention all of them, but I'm just going to mention one today. I have other videos. I have a whole series about wild edibles. There's a link up there somewhere to that series. You should check that out if you're interested in kn knowing more in depth. But if you're going to get one book, this is a great book. And what I really love about it is that it has a section for every plant that tells you whether or not there are any 
dangerous poisonous lookalikes for that plant. And I think that's really critical because it allows you to know when you need to be really careful and when you can be a little bit more cavalier about it. For example, in North America, for my area, if there's anything that looks even remotely like a raspberry, I know that it is not, it may not be a raspberry, it may not even be a blackberry, but it's not gonna kill me. There are no poisonous things that look like blackberries that grow in my area. Your area may be different, you should check that out. Uh, but knowing that, when I'm out on a trail and I see something that looks like a raspberry, I'm like, yeah, I'll try that. And I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm gonna kill myself. Um, and I think that's really important. And it's also really important uh, to, if you're looking at a book and you see that there is something that could potentially be poisonous, it looks like something, that you should know that maybe if your skill level isn't there yet, maybe you leave that one alone. But that's a really great um, feature of this book. And I think it really um, empowers you to just go out and feel like you don't need to know everything to get going. You can just learn one, two, three, four very, very common wild edibles and, and get a lot of um, mileage just out of of just those couple of things. So is that something you've thought of? Are there wild edibles in your area that you just think are just wonderful that you'd like to share with people? If you want to leave a comment below, you know, say like what your general region is and what are some common edibles that you think have really served you well, I'm sure people would love to hear that. So really the more we share all this stuff with each other, the better off it is for everyone. Because again, your neighbors are always going to be better neighbors in a crisis if they are not desperate. So, so spreading this knowledge around is always a wonderful thing. So enough about all that. We get a sneak peek of what's happening next week. And that, like I said, shit's starting to happen. You know, that action, you know, that action everyone's craving. I know it's kind of a slow start. And I, I fielded a few questions from people that are kind of like, oh, you know, there's nothing happening. It's just kind of how-to videos. And uh, oh, not, not that many people, but a couple people. And A, that's kind of what it's supposed to be. It's like, it is how-to prepping, but it's like supposed to be a little fun with the alien stuff. But also, um, we're only, uh, to, we're, today we're only five days in, and I think that when a crisis happens, it's not like there's a hurricane and you immediately put on battle fatigues and go like trekking off into whereverville. I mean, I think most people, you let the thing happen, the dust kind of settles, and then you start kind of putting your feelers out and, uh, and then getting a little bit more, uh, exploratory and, uh, uh maybe start taking a little more chances. So... We're going to start taking a few more chances as the series starts going forward. So, yeah, it was a slow start, but you can't just sit in your house forever, as my character is going to start thinking. So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the clip. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.